And when I showed up to the wedding to get married to this man that I love, my father is nowhere to be found. But his sisters flew out from Florida and Georgia to be there with me. He lives down the street from me. When I tell you I felt like nothing, like I felt like, like I felt like, like it'd be different if my father had passed, obviously that's different. But when I'm expecting you to show up and in moments that mean the world to me, like my entire Mm -hmm. world is changing. Like I I have your last name for a reason. I'm supposed to be under your care and you don't show up. And, and like this, this man I'm marrying could be anybody. It's your job to vet him. It's your job to see if he's worthy of my time of me. But as, as, so when men talk about women with daddy issues, it's like, it's not women's fault that they don't have the knowledge because one, if their fathers are trash, they don't know any better, but also like their father is supposed to teach them. This is what you look out for. This is what you do. But if you're that person, how are you going to tell somebody not to date somebody like you? Like, well, let's talk about, let's talk about the, the lack of self-worth that you develop from yes. your father, not even doing the bare minimum for you. The You're not even minimum. willing to do that. I didn't ask you to pay for my wedding. That not at I all. I didn't ask you to I asked show, you to show up. up, just show, show up. And, and one thing my father does consistently is not show up. Hi everybody. And welcome to love black woman. This is a new series that I'm having here where I'm having conversations, authentic conversations with black women who I deem as beautiful, awesome, who I love. And today is the first episode. Yay. So, so to kick things off, I have my cousin, my first built in best friend, my cousin. So I want to introduce her to you and allow her to introduce herself. So go ahead. I thought you were going to introduce me. Oh, okay. Anyway. (laughs) That was it. I didn't know that was the introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Ari. I also go by C Cyanide on social media. Um, to be honest, I don't know really, I don't really know what it is that I do. Uh, but outside of the socials, I am a nurse. I take care of people. Um, and then I go home and how do I explain this? I talk about everything except nursing. Boom. There we go. Because it's stressful. That's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> That's, absolutely. No, nursing, hearing about it is, is stressful, like hearing about it, So I can't imagine like working in it. Um, so today we are going to ha- be having a conversation about fathers. By the time this episode releases, it is Father's Day um, 2022. And so shout out to all the fathers out there. Um, however, there are a lot of... Oh, celebrate that holiday. I know. There are a lot of women <laughs> or men, a lot of people in general, who don't have the opportunity to celebrate Father's Day, not necessarily because their father is no longer here with us, but because the fathers choose not to be in their child's life. And so for a lot of people, that holiday can be very triggering to some folks. So if you are triggered by this conversation, please, I'll I'll catch you in the next video. Um, But we really want to have space to really talk about uh, dealing with daddy issues. Dealing with daddy issues is something that people like to make jokes about. It's a lot of things that you know, men say to women to kind of be spiteful, um, but it's a real issue. <laughs> it's a real issue. And so we're going to talk about it. Um, so I talked to my cousin earlier, obviously, because, you know, we're doing like the pre-show um, kind of thing. And I told her that I was a little nervous having this conversation because I know that I have some family who watch <laughs> these videos. And for my whole life, I have been protecting the image of my father. I have been protecting Um, the image of even my mom attached to my dad. Um, And so there's a lot of shame and that comes along with being honest about our experiences. And so I think the first step to healing is to remove the shame by being honest about it. So how are you feeling? I agree. You know what? And I feel like I had said this to you before, but honestly, I feel like I should open a PR firm because the amount of work, good quality work that I have done protecting the reputations of these people phenomenal. Okay. It's giving Olivia Pope. Right. (laughs) And, um, part of what helped me to heal honestly, uh, was understanding and realizing that that shame don't belong to me. That shame does not belong to me. That's good. It don't belong to you. It's not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I cannot, I cannot allow myself to feel responsible for the actions of adults whose job it was to take care of me yeah yeah period you know what I mean and same thing just like you spent a lot of time protecting these people and it didn't do anything but damage me and I don't feel like at the same time I don't get that same I don't get that same courtesy yeah in return um because at the end of the day their goal is to protect their image also so you've got two parties working to 
to protect that image. Yeah. They're not going to admit to all of the things that they do or, you know, the role they played in the relationship that you guys have now. No, they, they're going to go along with, with, with the narrative, yeah. which I don't know about you, but like for me, oftentimes it turns into, well, what's wrong with you? Yes. <laughs> why are you like that? Why do you act like that towards your family? And it's like, why do I, why do I try to preserve my sanity? That part. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I love what you said that, that that shame is not, that shame is not yours. Like it's not yours to own, but it's like, it's placed on us. Like, oh no, mm-hmm. you have to carry this. Like you have to do this. And if you're not protecting their image, you're being disrespectful or you're not honoring your parents, which is like, but even when people use that scripture, when they say like, honor your father and your mother, it also says, don't cause your daughter or chi- your child. I'm speaking daughter. Cause I'm a girl, but mm-hmm. it doesn't, don't cause your daughter like to be angry. Right. And so right. there's so many, there's so many situations where, you know, these texts are taken out of context, number one, but then also used to uphold this, this, uh, abusive behavior or, mm-hmm. um, just bad behavior in general. So, so yeah, I love that. So and, I, I, and I, mm-hmm. Sorry, I was going to say, and okay. also like, I feel like we we shy away from it. We do the protection because we don't want to be perceived as that girl with daddy issues, even though, let me tell you something, daddy issues is not, it's not gender specific at all. Nope. At all. There's a lot of men walking around here with the same kind of daddy wounds Yep. Um, that they then project onto, you know what I'm saying? I, But again, the stigma is more so heavily placed upon women. And, you know, just like our fathers, oftentimes I feel like men use that as a means to treat you how they want to, because then they can say, well, what I'm doing to you isn't really bad. You only feel that way because X, Y, and Z, you got daddy issues. Yep. Like meaning you're you're specific, like you are super sensitive to this particular behavior when in real life, this behavior is trash. Either way, you flip it. Absolutely. Whether my dad was present or not. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and I agree. It's a manipulative tactic. I hate mm-hmm. it. I hate it. It's like, oh, you're crazy because X, Y, and Z. And no. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah. So when we're talking about this, I was like, where do we even start? Like, it's just, there's so much. And sure. so I, I thought that we should just start from the beginning, right? Um, because the truth is, my relationship, your relationship with your dad was not mm-hmm. always volatile, right? Like, it wasn't always bad, like, Not at all. yeah. So for you, how did your relationship start with your dad? Um, I mean, I was a daddy's girl through and through. Um, my, like, like, you know, like my dad has two other kids. They're older than me. Um, but I was the, I was the one who grew up with my dad living in the house for, you know, a majority of the time. My parents were married the longest out of his three marriages. Um, so, you know, I had a, I had a closer relationship to him, um, than my siblings clearly, because again, I lived with him. He raised me or whatever. Um, I was very much like him when I was younger. We have a lot of the same interests. I find I fell in love with math because of my dad. My dad taught me math very early. We went to math nights at school. Uh, we baked together. Um, just so many things that was, I was, I was like my dad's broke best friend, basically. Uh, we went like, even, even as I was doing, you know, you want to come with me here. We went to cookouts together, me and my dad, we went to go see fireworks. We went to festivals. We, my mom is not an outdoor person. She's not outdoorsy. So my, my dad did all that stuff. We had a blast and it was never, you know, do you want to, so, uh, like I said, that's how we got our kickoff. Again, we're very much alike. We have a lot of the same interests. Um, and that went on. I mean, sports. Again, my mom was not outdoorsy. My dad used to play baseball. I started playing softball. Boom, period. That's cool. We have the same favorite football team, like all of that stuff, you know, typical, typical daddy girl behavior, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. One day yeah. it went left, but I, yeah. But, you know, starting out couldn't tell me nothing. And also, I will say, he was always the, he was the more gentle parent, even though he was not a gentle man, Yeah, I will say, but he was the more gentle parent. Whereas like, I was afraid of my mom. Like when my mom raised her voice at me, I would cry in an instant. Mm-hmm. My dad never yelled at me. My dad barely disciplined me, which later on anyway, yeah. <laughs> but, um, he never, but he never beat at most. My dad would pluck me. Okay. Which, that sucks. Oh my God, the trauma. <laughs> that shit hurt. Um, but like never beat me, never really yelled at me, was not the disciplinarian really. Yeah. Um, 
you know. Yeah. And so because of that also, because I was more afraid of my mom, of course I gravitated towards my dad. Of course. Yeah, of course. And I think, I think growing up similar situations, like I, my dad was my everything. Like, mm -hmm. even though in the beginning he was in the Navy, so he wasn't there all the time. So I was really close to my mom. Like I was Why really close. Why do you think your dad was in the Air Force? Oh, I don't know. No, he's in the, he was in the Navy. Um, um yeah. <laughs> my whole life's been alive. You think know someone. <laughs> But yeah, like, so, so he was in the Navy, so he would have to go out like mm -hmm. on ships and be gone. And so he would come back and I wouldn't recognize who he was. And so granny, mm -hmm. our great grandmother would come mm -hmm. down and like help my mother take care of me um, because she needed help. So in the beginning, I feel like there was like this disconnect. But as like I mm -hmm. grew into like girlhood, like my dad was everything. Like he was fun. We would go on roller coasters mm -hmm. together. My mom was not getting on our roller coasters. Mm -hmm. You know, he's more of like the thrill seeker, the adventurer. Um, mm -hmm. He got me into like action movies, like because I just wanted to be up under him all the time. Like it was, he was mm -hmm. just such a fun time. Um, and I felt safe with him. I remember vividly having, uh, I think I might have been like three years old, like in a stroller. And my father let me blow my nose in his shirt. Like that's listen, that's love because gross. Yeah, that's nasty. <laughs> exactly, that's gross. <laughs> that's <nasty>. Yes, <laughs> right. So, so like these are these are the images I have of my father. Like him being fun, him being, mm -hmm. and and I do feel like my mother was a more strict parent, and mm -hmm. I think I think mothers tend to be because it's like where and our moms are very much alike. I think, and we yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so like for her, it's always like you got to be safe. Everything has to be okay. And my dad would always be like, "She all right? Like she's fine." <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, and was, for reference guys, our mothers are cousins as well. Yes. Our, mo yes, our so mothers are cousins. They, <laughs> they too share that, that very similar. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. So growing up there was, I didn't, I didn't feel unsafe with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I felt, I felt like I could be a child, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And not saying that being with my mom made me not feel like I could be a child, but it's just different. Right. And I also feel like looking back, more responsibility was placed on my mother Right. So mm -hmm. like she had to be the person because if she wasn't the person holding it down, nobody else was going to do it. You and that's I mean? why I said later on when I said like he was not the discipline. But like, again, that kind of in like hindsight is 2020. Mm -hmm. We're like my mom had to make sure that I was on point because so, it's not always. I wouldn't say, I don't want to say that he didn't care. It's not that they don't care, but like somebody has to do it. Yeah. And I do attribute my current discipline and even my discipline as a child because again we're very similar yeah we we wasn't into all all the rah-rah that yeah. that was not who we are but not yeah. but we weren't interested in it either yep and I think that come on sorry my computer's anywhere um it's okay. <laughs> but I think that is very heavily attributed to the fact that our mothers played this much bigger role yes. when it came to developing who we were yes they were fun mm -hmm. and when you're a kid that's what you want. You want exactly. the fun. You're not, you know, you don't want to, do, but. Yep. Seeing the flip side of that fun mm -hmm. turns into irresponsibility Absolutely. where a person, again, mother has to be the responsible one. And that's not fun. That's not a fun job to have to tell everybody to put things away to, you know what I'm saying? To put childish ways away. And also realizing mm -hmm. low key, your mom is raising a husband. Like, you know, raising multiple children. You know what I'm saying? So of course she's stressed out. Of Ooh, course she's not really having talk fun. about the fact that fathers be children too. That part, that part. And, you know, again, looking back, I can see that, but obviously growing up, there was a lot of tension between my mother and I, because like, I was like, why can't mm -hmm. you be more fun like dad? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah. and I regret saying that. So mom, if you're watching, sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, as a child, you don't know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and I imagine and that can you, be you don't hurtful. know what you don't know. You don't, you don't. So, but I, 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 you know what? And sorry, I didn't, mean no, to no, you're you fine. Off, but, um, when you say that it can be more hurtful, it's like, you know, as a child, I never thought about how it felt like what it, what it felt like to be that parent that's really in the background doing every like you know I learned you learn stuff as you get older yeah about course. things that were happening when you're you're younger and it really took me a long time to understand what it must have been like to be trying to hold together this household uphold because they before we started protecting images mm -hmm. they were protecting the images of these Absolutely. men mm -hmm. um at the detriment of themselves yeah yeah which often rubbed off on us which damaging but also like I don't know what I would have done in that situation either because exactly. you're protecting, you're protecting the image of this man while also trying to protect your child. You know what I'm saying? Trying to maintain this, trying to maintain this, what's the word I'm looking for? This, the, the well, trying to maintain this sense of well being mm -hmm. for you, yourself, your child. And, the, but you've got this man also yeah. who I don't, 
I can't speak for, I can't speak for your mom, but I know that a lot of my mom staying with my dad was her thinking she was doing a good thing for me. Same. Yeah. Same. And to, and to that point, which gets us into the next phase, we're breaking this down into like phases, the beginning, middle, and it's not really the end. It's more like, what do we do now? But Mm -hmm. Like at some point, I remember having an argument with my mother and I don't know what we were arguing about, but I brought up that like, well, dad never X, Y, and Z. First of all, why did I say that? Dad never does this to me. Right. And so Mm -hmm. in that moment, I feel like she had a moment of breaking and she basically told me like, your dad is not who you think, who you think he is. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Right. And that's Mm -hmm. when the can of worms was opened. Like, oh, like actually, no, dad's a cheater. Dad's a liar. Dad is irresponsible with money. Dad is, and and all this, and like how you're saying, like all this pressure was put on her. Mm -hmm. She's not just protecting his image from her family and her friends. She's protecting his image from me. You feel me? Like, and so to have this person who you're trying to protect be like, yo, dad is, is not like you. It's like, well, girl, I've been protecting his image from you. And let me actually tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? I will say I never had a moment where I was like, well, you know, well, dad, you know, never X, Y, Z. But I will say I resent my mom. I still resent my mother for a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of things. And one of the biggest things that I resented her for was raising me in a one bedroom apartment. Mm, mm -hmm. Because even when we lived, even when my father lived with us, Mm -hmm. he lived in a one bedroom apartment for a majority of my life, Mm -hmm. which I resent the both of them for that because I feel like had it not been for, you know, certain selfish habits and attitudes, I could have looked better. There's no reason. There was no reason for that. Sure. Um, But then at how old was I? I don't remember how old I was, but we moved in with my grandmother or whatever. My Mm -hmm. grandmother has a four bedroom house. I remember that. So for the first time, I have my own room. I live in a regular house. I can have friends. Well, I can always have. But you know what I'm saying? I can now I'm now feeling like a normal child for you know, once in my life. Now I will say as a child, the one bedroom apartment thing didn't shake me as hard because I was a majority of my friends lived in the neighborhood. So we both basically, we lived the same life in, in that way. Um, but as I got older Mm -hmm. and your friendship circle starts to expand, that's when I realized like, this is not normal and it's embarrassing. So we moved in with my grandmother again, their marriage got very rocky once we moved into that house. Uh, but I was happy. Cause I got my own room, literally that's it. Cause I got my own room. And one night my mom packed, like she's, she, they got into an argument. My mom called a cab. We got in a cab. We showed up back in the same um, complex that we used to live in, but different apartment. We go to this apartment. It's empty. And she's like, Oh, this is where we live now. I was pissed. I was hit that's rough yeah. because I was in high school at that time this is my freshman year of high school now and you took me back to the same situation yeah which I understand that more than likely she was trying to save herself mm. but like I did not I didn't care how chaotic that household was yeah because I again I still for once had a sense of normalcy so to experience that for a couple of years and then be shifted back to you know, this life that I hated, yeah. I hated, yeah. and I never forgave her for it. I, to this day, I can't say that I do because, you know, on one hand, it's the, you know, they did their best, but on the other hand, I'm like, but was it? Though? Yeah. But was it though? Yeah. Um, And I feel like sometimes, even though our parents do the best that they can, sometimes it's not enough, right? Like sometimes, like, and, and it's hard for me to say, I think because in relationships and in all relationships, right? Like if I mm-hmm. show up and do the best that I can, sometimes for other people, that's not enough for them. You know what I mean? Not so. enough. And also I struggle sometimes with figuring out who it was the best for. Got you. Yeah. Um, I understand the doing the best, but, but like, I don't know that all the, the decisions, sorry. I don't that's know not- if all the decisions that were made were the best for me versus the best for them. Got you. That's fair. That's a fair, yeah. that's a fair judgment. Yeah. So like even, yeah. So when, when my mother revealed like all this stuff to me, my heart broke. Like, I, I feel mm-hmm. like, I, I feel like for one, I was too young for that information. If I'm just mm-hmm. being honest, I think I might've been like, what, 12, like maybe 12, 11 ish, um, 13 ish, you know, where we're like, mm-hmm. you know, butting heads. 
um, as mothers oh. and daughters tend to do. Or <laughs> yes, <it's> or <laughs> um, over the or. silliest stuff. But but you're trying you're trying to come into your own, and so to have this image of the person who I considered father to know that he's actually this horrible person, like you or a person who makes horrible decisions. I should I should say. And at you that know point. what? I mm-hmm. just remember why I had went through that whole spiel. That house is because I remember again I was angry at her for the situation, and I remember yeah. oftentimes, like I said, I never did the whole world dead, but we would get into arguments sometimes. And she would often say, well, if you think life would be so much better, you know, over there, then go there. Oof, yeah. And she would say that often. And I'm just like, yeah. But looking back and seeing how my dad lived then. Yeah. Um, it, it, I, I would not have had structure. Yeah. Not that I had a lot of structure in general, but I see what she was saying in terms of, you know, the level of responsibility that my dad had. Yeah. Because yeah. he always had a safety net, whether it was my mom or his mom, mm-hmm. he always had a safety net. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. do I think that he would have responsibly by himself taken care of me as a parent? No. Yeah. Yeah. Which I now I get what she means when she said that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again. But at that I'm time, sorry. I didn't understand because yeah. it was like, well, fine. I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> like, In the heat of teenage also, anger and at the angst. same time, what's crazy is. I would have loved to, but she also wouldn't let me. And it would piss me off because you're saying, you know, okay, I want to go. No. (laughs) (laughs) It's almost like, yeah, like you're saying stuff, but you're, but she is like protecting you from, you know, Mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z, but it's still, yeah. Like when, when my mother showed me like who this person really was, I don't, I don't know what happened, but after that, there was like a switch. Like I, 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 it literally felt like it happened overnight Um, But when my mother revealed that to me, I started seeing my father in a different light. And so when he would say certain things, even though I'm a child, I'm putting the pieces together Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. Like I I have a vivid memory of my father taking Mm -hmm. me to a person's house, like while he was cheating on my mom, like of vivid memories. Right. And so I, I, yes, it was on Mother's Day. Oh, no. Oh, girl. Yeah. You, and, and, and so like, so you're putting these things together and you're like, wow. So you even used me as a mm-hmm. pawn in your scheme um, to cheat mm-hmm. on my mother. Right. So my attitude towards him very much changed. And so, and so did he, he changed um, a lot. And so, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I lost my train of thought. Oh no. Okay. But there was something there. It'll come back. I'm trying to think of what she was because anyway, go ahead. Okay. It'll come It'll, back. If it comes It'll back, come just back. interrupt me. Yeah. So, It'll so yeah. Back. Okay. So, so we, so at some point, my mother let me know who he really is. And I started to see it for myself. Found it. I figured it out. (laughs) It was never a secret in my house. Mm. The things that my dad did, because my dad was into a lot of things. I, it took, well, my dad was addicted to drugs. I don't know about a lot. A lot of my family was addicted to drugs, but for sure I knew about my dad. It wasn't a secret because it caused such a big issue it caused such a big fuss all the time because it always set us back. Yeah. Like my dad would get paid on Fridays. Uh, He would go to work Friday, wouldn't see him for the rest of the weekend. And then he would come back for the rest of the weekend with no money. Wow. Or there would be things he was supposed to do. And, you know, he, oh yeah, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, blah, blah. Turn around. Can't do it because his money's gone. Yeah. I remember vividly there had, there would be nights where I would be sleeping and I would, mind you, we lived in a one bedroom apartment. So everyone sees and hears everything. Um, But I would remember him coming in, going to where he kept his money, getting more money and going back out. He would turn his phone off Mm. or not answer your calls, send you straight to voicemail. So that portion was never a, it was never a secret, never a secret how horrible of a husband he was, how horrible of a provider, the kind of situation that he put her in. But what I will say is that for me, the turning point wasn't a reveal because again mm-hmm. it wasn't a secret there's there's things I didn't know you know yeah. what I mean but it that those types of they weren't they weren't a secret to me they argued in front of me they fought in front of me my father was physically abusive to my mother in Same. front of me yeah. not a secret my pivot I think came when he started to when he started to do things to me and I the older that I got I became more susceptible to the BS that okay. he was that he was doing. So and seemed, that was the pivot. Yeah. It seems like me and you have the same pivot. Cause literally mm-hmm. that's where I was going. Like mm-hmm. my mother literally got sick 
like got sick from the stress that he was causing her, like her body literally Mm -hmm. started shutting down. So Mm -hmm. all the cheating, all the abuse, all the yelling, like I remember them, I remember Mm -hmm. them fighting. I remember being young and walking into their room and him throwing a glass of ice water in her face. Like, like, listen, like projecting. Yeah. Yeah. Trigger warning. This whole thing is a trigger warning. (laughs) No, yes, yes. But trigger trigger warning. I have a vivid memory, Mm -hmm. okay, of me being on the couch. And do you, I don't know if you remember our old apartment, but the whole the whole wall Mm -hmm. in our living room was paneled with mirror. Okay. The whole wall was a mirror. Mm -hmm. Um, and they were arguing, they were arguing in the kitchen. I was on the couch crying because that's what I did the whole time they argued or whatever. Yeah. I have this vivid memory and it's it's just an auditory memory of hearing my dad's hand hit my mom's face and hearing her yell, like you hit me. I can hear that. I can hear that. You don't forget that. stuck with me yeah forever yep forever yep yeah like insane like there there were so many instances and and I think like when I was younger I remember looking up and seeing that so I wasn't old enough like Mm -hmm. to know what was going on but I just knew it was wrong I knew I didn't like them arguing and I was very quiet Mm -hmm. I was very to myself oh I I cried all the time but I but I too kept to myself because but 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 I always felt like it was because I don't think anyone ever checked on me Mm. Me neither. In those times, me no one ever asked me if I was okay. Nope. When me those neither. things happened. So fast forward now. Yeah. I deal with a lot of things alone. Yeah. I think, I think to your point, like parents arguing, fighting, fussing, mm-hmm. like no one thinks, about, I think it's becoming more normal now to consider children mm-hmm. and how they're impacted by that trauma. But that was mm-hmm. traumatizing to me. Like literally I'd be upstairs. This was before my brother was even born. Right. So like mm-hmm. I'd be upstairs and I can hear them yelling and fussing and cussing each other out in the kitchen. And I'm just in my room with the door closed, just like journaling, right. Creating but worlds. See, that's the thing. Yeah. You had a room to go to. Girl. I could see in here. There's no way yeah. you could go. Yeah. Aside from it. And I do remember what I was going to say was like, and then growing up, getting a little bit older in high school, like my mom slept all the time. Yeah. She was always sleep. It would get on my nerves because I was responsible for doing a lot of housework. There was a lot of clutter. There was a lot of, you know, just everything. And it took me until I got way, way older to understand that's depression. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Sleeping all day is, and and it's because I had experienced it at one point, literally not being able to stay awake like Mm -hmm. that. That's depression. Yeah. And I didn't realize it at that time that that's what that was. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Go and ahead, being sorry. angry at my mom, like, remember my mom, she used, she used to have a drinking problem really bad. It was embarrassing. It rubbed off on me in such a huge way. Again, lots of resentment surrounding that, but also realizing there's she a lot coping. going on there. She was coping. There was a lot yeah. going on there. And while, again, I have issues with my dad, I've had relationship issues or whatever, but I've never been stuck in a situation where a man was physically putting his hands on me. I literally, I have a fear yeah. of a man hitting me in my face. Same. <laughs> There's so many more things I would rather do than to experience a man hitting me in my face. Yeah. Yeah. And she did that. Yeah. Often. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I, I remember when you were talking about, like, as you got older, you, you became, you like started coming into yourself, like the trauma started hitting you. Right. And so mm-hmm. for me, like in the same way, my, so my mother was getting sick. She literally was, um, she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And for those of you who don't know, it's a it's like a chronic illness where your, your body's literally like fighting itself. Mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, for, yeah. you know, you make it easier to understand. And it's triggered by stress. It's triggered by stress. And so my mother was stressed out all the time, like all the time. And so I remember her throwing, she threw a, like, like we were washing clothes and I think like she threw something upstairs and her arm got stuck. Like her arm got stuck Ooh. here and she was like screaming in pain. And I remember that, like, mm-hmm. what is happening? What's going on? And, and that stuff, like that chronic illness started coming up because of the trauma my father was caught, was like, like putting on her. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when she got sick, she also had a few surgeries. There's also a traumatic moment. I remember my mother was throwing up in the, in the bathroom. She was throwing mm-hmm. up in the bathroom. And I said, dad, we need to take, cause she just had surgery. I was like, dad, we need to take her to the hospital immediately. And he's like, mm-hmm. oh, she's fine. She'll be fine. I did not have a license, but I was going to drive my mother to the hospital, right? Like, because Mm -hmm. like, I was like, how useless are you that you're sitting in here and your wife is literally throwing up because her body's rejecting something, something is wrong Mm -hmm. (laughs) that like, you're, you're like, oh, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. And I told my mom, get in the car, I'll drive you. And even my mother was like, no, it's okay. It's okay. Almost like, like, and at that moment, I'm like, something is, something is wrong. (laughs) Something is off. Yes, they do. And, and so because she was sick, 
he couldn't put hands on her no more. He couldn't really argue with her anymore. So he started putting hands on me. When I tell mm-hmm. you I've been thrown across rooms, I have been punched in the face. Like I have been bleeding. My dad has sat mm-hmm. on my chest so I can't breathe and I can't move. He has told me that he wanted to kill me. Like mm-hmm. there's like, there's so much like, and, and so that, that, ha- that started happening gradually, but mm-hmm. I didn't realize the impact that that had on me until way later, right? Like in the moment you're surviving, right? In the moment you're trying to protect your mom. I remember my mother, my father grabbing my mother and throwing her on the couch. Matthew was a baby. I was holding Mm -hmm. Matthew, put him to the side, right? And like, what is going on? Matthew screaming, crying, my my, my brother is screaming and crying. Um, And I remember seeing that and I'm trying to protect my mom at what, eight years old, nine years old? Like, what Mm -hmm. am I, what am I supposed to do? So I became the protector. Like I was fighting this man constantly. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's so crazy because I, your dad took a more physical approach with you with me he took a more emotional approach like a emotional mental abusive approach approach which because anyway th- it speaks a lot to who he is truly as a person Absolutely. when it comes to being a complete and total coward but whatever mm-hmm. um but I remember the first time I had ever tried to protect my mom physically from yeah. him and I remember and it's crazy because when he would get into these, I, I, I don't even want to call it an episode because then that's kind of separating him from his behavior. Yeah. But in these times, his face looked different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I will never forget, I was a little bit older. I want to say I was like 11, 12. And again, very vivid memory. I remember him coming for her and I physically tried to get him off of her. And he looked at me with these eyes mm. and the craziest face was like, don't you ever put your hands on me again. And I just, Wow. Terrifying. Yeah. It um, is. so that was one thing. And the other situation is the other situation I remember vividly was him and my mom getting into an argument, you know, and he was leaving. And I remember him on his way out the door saying, you know, Ariel, I'm sorry, but like I don't ever want to see you or your mom ever again. And I'm like, well, what Jesus. did I do? Right. Right. And I think that for him, I don't think that it was because he couldn't beat up on her anymore which you know partially because they had separated at that time and it went on even after they separated but I think also though I started to remind him of my mother Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but not only did I remind him of my mother but I did well in life generally and that pissed him off Mm -hmm. it pissed him off like how dare you do well without me how dare you do well without me yeah. and why do I know this and uh, this is not and this is not speaking out of vanity or you know whatever have you but my dad has literally said to me you know one he he'll say like he's one I was in college one time and I don't even remember what all this is over I don't know what they were beefing about or what we were beefing about but he said something along the lines of and I know that you drink you're just like your mother and I'm like whoa first of all I'm, I'm in college I think I I was probably 21 at the time and I'm like is that a rumor right that I drink <laughs> like you know you're just like and I told you my mom had a problem with drinking yeah. back then but I'm just like but how evil and mean do you have to be to throw that in someone's face like throw yeah, someone's yeah, addiction yeah, and issues I, I and it wasn't even I know that that you have a drinking problem right. I know that you get it literally was, and I know that you be drinking you're just you're just like your mother it's gross it's great. And as I got old, even older after college, you know, the narrative has been, you think you're so much better than me and my family. Well, first of all, sir, I too am your child. I was going to say, am I not he your started, He started to separate me from, from him, from my, my siblings, basically, yeah. um, as he separated further and further from my mother. And that was his way of hurting me by saying, you know, by you know, making that separate, he would, he would say my family. Yeah. If he was talking about my grandmother, he would say my mother. Yeah. You know what I mean? But his insult always, and I could probably go, I probably still have the messages, but his insult always was comparing me to my mom. Mm. You're just like your mother, you, you know, blah, blah. Yeah. So I think for me, because my mom, my mom, she's a college grad. You know what I'm saying? She was a military brat. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She did not, well, I, and I, I can't speak to what life she lived like, but, right. but like, sis had things going. She had options. <laughs> and she had options and she yeah. was a baddie. <laughs> a ba- body. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am, because these legs, 
you know what I mean yeah um but she had things going him yeah Mm. Eh. Yeah. Eh. so me growing up again because of the discipline that she provided yeah you know what I mean even though I went through all the things I went through your girl came out okay yeah yeah and I think that that really irritated him because that really spoke to how much better she was yeah and how he did not deserve her because your other two kids are by a different woman. Mm. So for this one child to turn out so completely different, mm-hmm. you know, by the woman that you, you know, tear all that tear down bash, whatever, whatever, you put her through all of this stuff. You put the child through all this stuff. And yeah. that child, that the product of that situation still turned out better yeah. than, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that also it, speaks to like this, like you, this evil, right? To me, it's, it's evil. Mm-hmm that you would want your daughter to fail, like that you would leave so that she does fail. Yes. Like that's not the flex mm-hmm. you think it is. It's really showing yes. that your character is trash. Because I've <laughs> never said I'm better than you. It, it, yeah. In the times that it shows up in conversation, I would be looking at my phone like, who said that? And why are you competing I've never with said me? that. Or he said before to me, you know, um, he said something like, you think you're better than me, my fam, because you, uh, something like you think everybody else, something, something about me thinking, that everybody else's father or whatever, whatever was better than him because, uh, or I think I'm better than him because he didn't go to college or something. I looked at, I've never brought that. I never even thought about the fact that my dad didn't go to college. Cause it doesn't matter. Never thought about it. Never thought about it. Yeah. But you bringing it up to me, uh, your kid, which you should be proud that your yeah. kid went to and graduated college yeah. or whatever says that that's been weighing heavily on you yeah it, it, that's what you're insecure about it's not like has let's, nothing also, to do let's with you. also let's also talk about your absence when I went away to college okay can we okay so before we even get there right like yes because mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. so so all that just to say that my dad was abusive he cheated and mm-hmm. one day he literally asked my mother for money ask my mother for money to support his life to move out of the house Thank the audacity you. The audacity. And Don't he left. I'm, I'm being, I'm being so serious. When I found this out later, obviously, cause I wasn't, I wasn't there for the conversation, but like he asked her for money to, for like a startup for his ability to cheat and start his new life without us. Um, Sorry. we had, a, we, right. We had a family meeting without my mother being, without my mother knowing what the family meeting was about. And basically he told us that he tried with my mom and he, he has to, he has to be happy. He has to leave so he can be happy leave his children, leave his wife in, in, in financial like ruin because he ruined it. Um, and so we struggled. Like when he left, he, he mm-hmm. was able to live his own life, his own bachelor pad. That's a, he also, a very big shift. Yes, it is. And he, he also, the thing is we weren't rich. We were never like, even though we had a house, we were struggling in that house. Um, so me. yes. Me. Okay. okay. Yes. Can we just, for, for comedic relief, can we yes. just talk about how, when we were younger, I thought you lived in a mansion. Please. I'm dead. I'm dead serious. Yeah. I would tell people that my cousin lives in a mansion. That's funny. That's I thought funny. I thought it was a mansion to meet you. <laughs> no, I mean it, the thing is, I'm grateful. I'm grateful we had the house, but there was no peace in but it. It's not and, there was, yeah. it. and it's it's not all what it's cracked up to be at all. Especially and if you're that's, yeah. That's why now I can look back on my life and be like, and I think was I talking to you? No, I think I was talking to my friend, but I was talking about how like there were so many people whose situations when I was growing up, I would envy because they had more money. Like we, more money. we were poor, we were broke, yeah. we, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever. And I used to be so envious. Yeah. I wanted things. I wanted material things. I wanted to be stylish. I wanted to be up to date. I wanted, you know, blah, blah. But I look back on those people now. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be anything like them. Yeah. I'm fine with exactly who I turned Absolutely. out to be. Absolutely. And, and even like, again, growing up in that house, we went to thrift stores for everything. I was made fun of constantly. Like, you know, like I was never. Y'all did. Y'all were good yes. for thrift stores. Yes. I wasn't even Because we didn't have and money I, like that. <laughs> honestly. And, and you know what? I think the, the difference there is that my mom, I think where she fell short was like, y'all went to thrift stores and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. My mom, and I learned this later in life, went into a lot of debt compensating for yeah. the way that my dad was messing up the money mm-hmm. or whatever. And, you know, trying to keep this image or whatever, whatever, which. Maybe we should have been at the third store because yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was it was all right until you got teased. But um, that's all the conversation. That's not their fault. But to I me, mean, but yeah. either way, because it, I was getting brand new shoes, but I only got one pair at a time. 
that part yeah so I'm wearing them into the ground I will never forget this pair of sketches I had that I wore until they had it had a hole in a in the toe yeah yeah I, I, I wear mine until toe. they started talking and I was so right and I was so young at that time I I noticed but also I I you know but I it, I used to have to ask or say I need another pair of sneakers yeah and the fact like looking back as an adult now that that was such a big deal yeah like just thinking about how I just bought another pair of sneakers the other day yeah. for work. Yeah, yeah. A pair of Air Max, Air Maxes for work. You know the yeah. Air Maxes are one hundred and seventy dollars. I did not know that. I did not know that because I'm not a sneaker girl. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. So being yeah. able to do that now and then realizing, like growing up, that it was an event that I needed new shoes. Yeah. It really puts things in perspective. Whoa. Yeah. And to shake the table a little bit more, I'm a nosy person. I'm an inquisitive child. Okay. Um. But I told you we had moved into my grandmother's house at one point and in my, there was always old things in the house, of course. And I found this letter in a drawer, a random letter in a drawer. It was dated from when I was like young, young, like toddler young. It was from my mom to my dad. And I never talked about this. I never told them I found this, whatever, whatever. Um, it was from my mother to my dad talking about all of the hardship that was happening because of the things that he was doing and her literally talking about me needing new shoes like the fact that that has always been a thing yeah and him having to and her having to write to him like like beg yeah I yeah let a a handwritten letter Mm -hmm. and I I found this I had to have been like maybe like 11 somewhere around there when I found it so I was even, I was young, young. And I, I remember like doing the math. I was very like toddler young. Yeah. And I'm like, the fact that this has been a thing since I was a toddler that you cannot get this man yeah. to buy the kid's shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, my mom, she didn't have parents mm-hmm. growing up. Her mm-hmm. parents died when she was young. Yeah. So I can also see how much of a bigger deal that was because she didn't have anybody to fall back on. He could fall back on his mom at any time, which is why it allowed him to be as irresponsible as he was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But to just see, it's it's been it's been tumultuous from the very beginning. Yeah. Or learning that prior to them getting married, all parties involved at the wedding were trying to convince my mom not to do it. Wow. Yeah. And me looking back, if I could, I would have don't do it this yeah I was in my parents wedding <laughs> yes you were I, so, <laughs> I was there <laughs> right so if I knew then what I do now yeah. in my little four-year-old voice don't do it don't <laughs> please do it this. yeah do yeah because <laughs> I and to, and to, to that point like I remember asking my mother for like ten dollars to go on a field trip and mm-hmm. how that was like world shaking and to me I'm like as a, as a kid you don't understand money you don't really like mm-hmm. you don't know how it works but like I'm mm-hmm. like, I just need ten dollars to go on a field trip it was mm-hmm. a huge deal. And I found out later is because like our, my, my father was stretching our wallet thin one. We were, we were, I really feel like we were in over our heads. Right. But then also mm-hmm. when you have somebody who is investing in all these quick, get rich quick schemes and like all these like business mm-hmm. ventures and all these ideas, like mm-hmm. you're in your, and your family is going without, like he didn't yeah. have his priorities in, in check. Oof. And so while I admire <laughs> his entrepreneurial spirit. It's like, it was a very irresponsible <laughs> investment. Like, so, right. so asking my mother for money was stressful. And so that would cause tension with she and I, because I didn't yes. know what was going on. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and I'm not, I'm not entitled to money, but I'm like, I just need money to go on field trip with my friends. <laughs> like that's I as far as I'm not what was go. going on. And I, I struggle with, I struggle with, um, I, was, I struggle with trying to decide whether or not I would have benefited or not. Fair. Yeah. Because looking back, I'm like, well, I didn't know that. So yeah. to me, it came across as you just did not like me that much. Yes. You didn't want you didn't want to see me be great. Right. Right. Which is not... you, you don't you don't want me to be great. You're a, <laughs> you're a hater. I don't know why, but because you be hating. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then to look back and be like, girl, your father ran her finances into the ground. That part. One. Yeah. Again, my mom had a college degree. You know, she had a good whatever. Mm-hmm. The girl had options, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But he dragged her straight to hell. Yeah. Yeah. And straight to hell. Like seriously. And and I and I still I still have I have bitterness towards him even when he left. So that was a complicated feeling, right? Because it was like, one, I'm relieved that he left because he's causing this family so much stress. Mm-hmm. Um, but but because even like with everything, like he would do stuff like put make me go in my room and read the Bible and like for punishment, like very like psychologically 
traumatic things. Um, he would mm-hmm. bang on my door in the morning, like e- his presence, everybody would walk on eggshells around him. Like his, mm-hmm. like you never knew what person he was going to be when he came home. You never knew if he was mm-hmm. going to pop off and start arguing with you or slap you. And like, I remember my mother putting makeup on my face to go to church. Mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. riding in the car with him and he threw uh, hot oatmeal. oatmeal. Yes. I remember that hot story, oatmeal yeah. all over me. And we had to go back and change. So he was like a deacon in the church and in like, this, this pious man, right. But can at we home, guess, we, we can go there. We yes. Can go ahead, go like, ahead. And, and, and this pious man, right. Who's like held in high regard and, oh, he's so saved and whole time. I'm like, this man is abusive. He is mean. He is surly. Like he is a cheater. And it was they crazy because they, they the made acting us skills. the acting skills the acting skills. and and they would, and they would tell us, and it was such misogynistic I'm just saying it. it was misogynistic. My mother told them what was going on. They're like, oh, well, you, you should work it out. No, like a real, a real leader would say, leave that man because he's dangerous to your family. And I remember being, being at a, um, being, oh, I remember, oh, go ahead, go ahead, okay. go ahead. I remember, remember when granny passed away. So our great grandmother, mm-hmm. she passed away. We wanted to go visit her for the weekend. I remember this story. My father said, no, we're not going to go visit her. We're going to go to Florida because whatever. So while we were in Florida, she passes away. When I tell you that I was dealing with with guilt for so many years, that I had was your so best much friend. guilt. That was my best friend. I, me, like, yes, absolutely. Granny was, that granny was her best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she like I was I was enamored with her. Yeah. Like, she was yeah. like, I just she was everything. And so when she passed away, I was filled with so much guilt and regret. And I was so angry at my father for making us go to Florida. Um, and so I remember being in church and we had like this memorial service where we talk about people we've lost so that we can grieve and like heal. And so I remember saying, beginning to say like, yeah, well, I wanted to go to Philly, but my father didn't allow us to do it. And I remember my mom telling me to be quiet. And, and so that, so I was learning at a young age that I'm not allowed to say how I feel. I'm not allowed to be honest about the pain that's happening in my life. Mm-hmm. And also nobody wants to hear my pain. And so I learned that like, oh, I do have to suffer in silence. Oh, it's, it's normal for like, this must be normal, right? Obviously I knew it wasn't, but this must be normal because everybody is pretending and acting like it is. And so again, that, that showed up later. So, I yeah. think at the end of the day, it was kind of like your life. Yeah. Be grateful. Shh, yeah. Hush. Yeah. Or the whole narrative where like some, some people have it worse than you, yes. which understandable but that does not mean that I should be going through what I'm going through yeah absolutely. you know what I mean um I I think that that whole one well one your dad left my mom left my oh. dad my dad was cheating all that completely absent didn't you know whatever but my mom physically left you know that was that was her doing and he I would dare to say to this day but you know still will not completely leave her alone you know what I mean mm-hmm. um but the whole, the whole thing, like the whole church thing mm-hmm. for me didn't have until I got older. Mm-hmm. I came back home. Uh, where was I coming home from? I don't know. You know, I travel mm-hmm. or whatever for work. But when I came back home, me and my dad, we went a good couple of years without speaking because he found a new wife and you know, they always switch up because always they find these people who don't know who they are for real. Yep. Yep. And they're going to do whatever they can to uphold, you know, that image. So I will never forget um me but mind you I started going to the church that that I went to before my dad did okay whatever my dad started going after me when I was in high school like I went to Bible study on Wednesdays I was in the young adult choir whatever whatever my my dad attended that church but he wasn't a part of that church then okay. um I leave I come back our church had a new pastor a new younger pastor blah blah and my dad asked me to go to Bible study with him I'm like okay sure whatever we get to bible study and that's when i find out my father is the head of the men's ministry who are you leading when it comes to being a man who are you leading yep and that's what i'm like wow you really have the ability to make people think that you are whoever you want they're master manipulators yep he, I, you know, we went through what we went through, whatever, whatever. My dad never changed. He always reverted back to who he was to me, yeah. regardless of what other people saw. He all, he was, he's never been different. Yeah. He's appeared different. Let's be clear. He's appeared, but he's never been different. And so I remember writing to the pastor of the church again, that I was a member of first. Now this new pastor came while I was away from home. 
or whatever. But again, you are the pastor of the church and this is one of your leaders. This is one of the people you appointed as a leader and telling him like, you know, some of the things like wanting to talk to him because this is a man who leads your church, but like, let me tell you what he's doing to me, his family, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Because it should matter. <laughs> you want to talk about misogyny. This man wrote me back and told me, well, you know, I've, I've always known him to be X, Y, Z. I've never had a problem with him. Everybody likes him. Um, and, you know, part, I don't really like to get involved in family affairs. And you're the pastor? Isn't that your job? Like get, I don't like to get involved in family affairs. Isn't that your job? Like I don't like to get involved. Now, mind you, whether this past, again, I was a member before he got there. So yeah. whether you know that I've been a member there. What, he should, but go ahead. Whatever. <laughs> but to say to me, when I'm trying to bring some stuff to your attention, and all I thought was like, you know what, that's fine. We can set up a time to talk, you know, blah, blah. This is not about me. You know, it wasn't about being lit, but it's like, this man is leading other men in your church. Yes. And, and for care. you, and you should care about that mm -hmm. to say that, well, everybody likes him and I've never had a bad experience with him. And I don't really like to get involved in family. It goes back to that men not holding men accountable thing, like for the sake of whatever church business, it don't matter. That took me a back and I've never stepped foot in that church ever again. Under still I had it, probably won't, probably Under won't, probably won't. He's still involved in the church. And again, he's allowed to function as whoever it is he pretends to be. Okay. My godfather, one of my godfathers has been a deacon at that church for a very long time prior to both of us joining that church. And I will never forget him. My, I, seen, I saw my godfather, my godfather had mentioned something like, oh yeah, you know, I talked to your dad and he told me you were doing X, Y, and Z. How is he telling you that? And we don't even speak. Can I just say, can I just say a lot of people, it's crazy because these men, and again, I'm talking about my father, your father and men mm -hmm. like them, they, they're really good at putting on even for other people to make it seem like they're involved in your life. It's like, but really my father has not talked to me since my birthday in January. It is June 12th. My birthday was January 26th. He called me on the 27th because he never remembers my birthday. That's all the conversation. But yeah, like- I saw you the last time me and my father have had a conversation. Yes. What is that? But they parade uh, he's around- in California like, right now visiting yes. my other siblings yeah. and all seven of his grandkids. I didn't even yeah. know that some of them grandkids existed. Yeah, yeah. That's how much of a separation he keeps between us. Yeah. There are reasons why I don't associate with his son who he supports 100% despite all of the trash things that his son has done to me. Yeah. Um, and as far as my sister is concerned, I had to separate from her because of him. Yeah. Because of him, because yeah. it was damaging for me because again, this man is treating me any kind of way, talks to me any kind of way, whatever, whatever. He doesn't treat them that way or whatever. And they're across the country. So they don't know what's going on over here on this side. So having to hear all the time what he said about me or what's going on, or what, what did you, you know, what happened with you and dad, you know, da, 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 that got stressful for me because I'm trying to explain to her and her response will be like, well, I don't know what's going on with y'all. I'm telling you what's going on. Your dad's trash is yes. what's going on. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's what's going on. Or she would like, you know, oh, well, dad, your dad's a liar. They're very he's good always, at that. He's, he's always been a liar. Your dad has been a liar your entire life and my entire life. Yeah just lived across the country and I think his absence makes you see him through rose-colored glasses but I was there yeah. girl yeah and it's... I couldn't deal with it anymore mm -hmm. I could not deal with it anymore and and to see him play such an active role in their life to be so confused to be so consumed by them their kids because he's got grandkids now which if that makes you feel better than fine you know whatever but um but then you you flip to me and it's like you act like I don't exist yeah. because I know the truth about you. That part, that part. Let's talk about that. I know the truth about you. I will not pretend when it comes to who you are. Same mm -hmm. thing with his wife. My dad got remarried. I, that woman, I don't know, don't know that woman from a can of paint. I've had bad experiences with her. Mm -hmm. Don't have a girlfriend, but it's because I know who this man is. And of course, if, if you're going to uphold this image, you need to keep it separate. Yeah. You absolutely. need to keep it separate. Um, or listening to my dad say, or expressing to my dad how I felt about how he has carried on this relationship with my brother after, you know, the history of my brother abusing me or whatever. And my dad saying to me, oh, well, you know, I thought it was only one time. And um, I, I thought it was only one time. And like, you know, he's really sorry about that. You know, he really is. He's tore up about that. No, he's not. So it was okay. cool for you. You never brought it up. You never addressed it. You never... 
and you always cater to them. He always catered to them. He would let me go without all the time. Yep. If it was me, me, me needing something as the youngest child that's still growing, trying to pick, he would let me go without every single time if they needed something. Yeah. Every and, single time. Yes. And for you to place, especially that one particular child, your mm-hmm. son, for you to place him above me or whatever, even, even knowing what he has done to me, because you thought in your head, oh, well, I, I thought it only happened one time. One time too many. But that, also, and also, you know, if that wasn't my son, I would. But because it's your. It's failing. Like it's little, you're literally failing to protect your can child. Can talk about what that does to your child? Absolutely. Self-esteem and your child's sense of like, you know, well-being and safety. Value. And whatever. Value. Yeah. Value. Yeah. Value. Because d- what am I worth? Yeah. You, the shit has all, it, it's already been tumultuous. Mm-hmm. You've already put me through tons and tons. But then for you to say, I ain't worth a damn thing. Yeah. And can I, can I say that even in my father leaving in his, like when I tell you that bare minimum, like there'd be moments where he was supposed to pick us up in front of the house. He would never show up. Baby. I, I remember. And even, and even unto you remember un, into the wedding when I got married, so this, there's a lot of stuff that happened in between abuse, like you lying. He, we went to go see him on weekends and I asked mom not to let me go back over there anymore because one, there was no, he didn't really create a space for me or my brother to live. And also he was living with a woman while he was still married to my mom trash. So I was like, don't bring me over to this house no more. Um, so, but also when I was getting married, my father, my father and I were not on good terms, right? We, we were, we weren't, we weren't on bad terms. But we went on good terms. Cause we don't talk like to me, if we're not, on, if we're not talking, we're not on right. good terms. Um, so, and you're my father, like, you're not a friend, you're my father. So, um, and I was dealing with a lot of like daddy issues in that. And so I was getting married. I only get married once Lord willing. And so I'm like, okay, I want my father to be there at my wedding. I want my father to give me away. And this is me extending grace because you have done the bare minimum. You have not so much grace. Cause you, I'm not even okay. inviting mine. Cause you, cause you even almost walk me down. Okay. Now. Cause you, you, you come to graduations, you come to all these celebrations, but you ain't, you ain't helped me with none of it. You didn't, you didn't spot me at 20 when I needed lunch or food. You didn't help me with books. You didn't help me study for anything, like nothing. Like you, you, you did absolutely nothing, but you want to show up at graduation. Like you are somebody like you're proud of me. And it's just, to me, it shows that you really just want to be seen and you're, you don't want to be judged by other people for not being there. Optics baby, optics baby, optics baby, because let me tell you how we weren't speaking when I graduated college either. Me and my father were not speaking. And the reason why we were not speaking is because Leading up to graduation, my car broke down. Mm-hmm. I did not have a car, needed my car back. My mom didn't have money to help me with rent or my car at that time. Mm-hmm. My dad's like, you know, I'll take care of it. You know, blah, 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 blah. This is in the months leading up to graduation. My, we, and I wasn't expecting for the car to break down. Anyway, mm-hmm. it's like, he was like, oh, well, you know, you need to get a car. You need to get your car out of the shop because if you don't, they're going to charge you to keep it there or whatever. Yeah. You need to get your car fixed. You need to get out of the shop. You need your car, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, dad, you know, my rent needs to be paid though. My rent is due. I don't have enough to pay it. Um, if I had a choice, cause at that time I was staying with my line sister or whatever. And, you know, we were riding, you know, to campus together. Mm-hmm. She was staying across the street from campus. So either I would stay at her, at her house and we would just walk to campus across the street or mm-hmm. she would stay with me and I would ride with her. I don't need, I don't need the car that will be taken care of. I yeah. need to pay my rent. Though. I need somewhere to live. <laughs> don't worry about that. I'm going to take care of that. You need to get your, you know, you need to get a car, get your car out, blah, 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 yada, yada. And I'm like, well, dad. And I, I said this clear as day specifically, if you don't have money for both, just send me money for before I pay for this car. If you don't have money for my rent, tell me because I will pay for Mm -hmm. my rent. Mm -hmm. I told you I got it. Blah, 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 yada, yada. Get my car out, whatever, whatever. My rent is due calling his phone no answer no answer no answer did not answer any of my calls sending me to voicemail blah 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 blah. I had an eviction notice on my door I never got evicted because I ended up getting the money but that shit's still on my record I still have to I still have to show proof now even now that I was not evicted you know here's you know I've got emails from the you know here's as if I did complete my you know whatever whatever 
But what really did it for me was I was talking to my sister one time. This is when we were talking. And again, like now you can see why we have issues. I'm talking to her and she's like, oh, well, you know, dad told me not to tell you, but, um, you know, he had to get another car because, you know, his car had broke down, blah, blah. Alicia, he did not, he was going to let me be homeless. Yeah. Basically. Because he needed another car. He was driving his girlfriend at the time's car to work. When I finally did talk to him, it was like, what was I supposed to do? I couldn't keep driving her car. Well, my, and it's not even, for me, it's not even that you saved yourself from a situation that wasn't that bad. Because I didn't, I wasn't going to have nowhere to live. That part. You had a car to drive at the end of the day. That part. Had you given it another week or two, you could have got a car after that. But like at the end of the day, it would have worked out for you. Mm -hmm. I'm working full time and trying to finish nursing school full time and struggling. Mm -hmm. Right. But my whole thing is like, it's not that you don't have it. It's not, it's not, it's not like you called me to tell me you didn't have it. You just didn't say anything. You went MIA. Yeah. You went MIA. So my question for him was, what did you think was happening during that time? Yeah, exactly. Did you care? And, and I think, were you, were you wondering if it worked out? What did you, how did you think that went? Yeah. And, and to, when I tell you that I, those are your situation, I had so many situations like that when I, again, in college, wasn't nobody coming to save me. Like, let's talk about the, the feeling of not having anybody to rely Ooh. on or lean on. Like you can't, you can't even every man for himself, every man for himself. And you call in and like, it's like on a last whim, it's like, after I tapped out my mother for help or whatever, like, it's like, I'm calling my dad. He don't answer. I don't hear from him in weeks. Like he also don't never have no money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or like even moving in, like, and if I cry, it's okay. But uncle Brian. So we have an uncle. Well, I have an uncle uh, who's her cousin, uncle Brian. Him. Yes. He I love him yesterday. I didn't he helped, that. Yes. He helped me move into college because my dad didn't help me. Mm-hmm. Like my, like he, and when I say that my dad lives down the street from me, I mean, he lives down the street from me. Could not mm-hmm. be concerned. Couldn't care less about me, my well being. So even going back to the wedding, So I called my father like, hey, I want you to be in the wedding. He's offering all this help. Like, oh, you can get married on the base because again, he was a Navy man. So, okay, Mm -hmm. discounted rates for everything. Wonderful, that would help us out a lot. He goes in my A. So I say, forget about it. You don't have to ask for help, whatever. But can you still come? No call, no answer, no text. When I tell you my father stood me up at my wedding, how heartbroken I was. Like, first of all, there was a lot of stuff going on with the wedding. (laughs) yeah which which, yes yes follow me on tiktok yes follow her on tiktok please because she got the whole story i might regale it here from my point of view because it was trash all around people were showing their entire behinds my entire like the entire wedding um and i had no i didn't feel like i had any support like there was no support and so then when i showed up to the wedding to get married to this man that i love my father is nowhere to be found but his sisters flew out from florida and georgia to be there with me. He lives down the street from me. When I tell you, I felt like nothing. Like I felt like, like, I felt like, like it'd be different if my father had passed, obviously that's different. But when I'm expecting you to show up and in moments that mean the world to me, like my entire world is changing. Like I I have your last name for a reason. I'm supposed to be under your care and you don't show up. And, and like this, this man I'm marrying could be anybody. It's your job to vet him. It's your job to see if he's worthy of my time of me. But as, as, so when men talk about women with daddy issues, it's like, it's not women's fault that they don't have the knowledge because one, if their fathers are trash, they don't know any better, but also like their father is supposed to teach them. This is what you look out for. This is what you do. But if you're that person, how are you going to tell somebody not to date somebody like you? Like, but let's talk about, let's talk about the, the lack of self-worth that you develop from yes. your father, not even doing the bare minimum for you. The You're not even willing minimum. to do that. I didn't ask you to pay for my wedding. That not at I all. I didn't ask you to I asked you to show up. up, just show, show up. And, and one thing my father does consistently is not show up. One thing he does is make promises he does not keep. And so what Absolutely. that, what that taught me is not to trust any man. Don't trust no not man. No man is going to come free because if my own father if my mm-hmm. own father cannot sacrifice mm-hmm. his time for me and I'm yep. half of him, like literally mm-hmm. my make my genetic makeup is half of him and he he cannot sacrifice his time for me. Why does anybody else owe me Child, any kindness? At least you got rid of the name. I'm still carrying mine. <laughs> Girl, technically you're still whatever. I haven't done it because but, COVID, but. <laughs> but <laughs> I, so my dad showed up to my college graduation. Mind you, you've been minimally, minimally supportive up until this point, my mom was in a one bedroom apartment the whole time I was in college. So when I would come home for break, my dad had a place 
you know, he was running a house. We had two bedrooms. I was, I would go stay with him on break because I want to live a normal life. One time I came home from break, he picked me up from the, I don't know if I took the train or the bus, whatever. He picks me up and he doesn't say anything to me. He just drops me off at my mom's house. Says nothing, says nothing or whatever, which is weird because I usually come stay with you. I go to his house. He let his girlfriend and her children move into his house. Okay. Which is why I got dropped off at my mother's house. Now let's fast forward. Let's, you know, this is despite the fact you didn't help me pay rent because he was paying child support and, you know, the bare minimum. I would need stuff. He would turn around. Well, I can't do this because, you know, your sister needs money for the boys because we won't talk about how more important my siblings became once they had children. All of a sudden it came about him having to take care of his grandchildren, despite the fact that they're adults, they should be taking care of their children. Mm -hmm. But he himself, has a mom that still takes care of him to an extent. So, you know, that's yeah. neither here nor there. But I told my mom, my dad don't need to come to graduation because that was right after I was about to get evicted. He don't need to come. Yeah. What are you coming here for? Honestly. What do you come? The only reason why he came was because he was bringing my grandmother. Mm. That's mm -hmm. literally the only reason why I allowed for him to be here. He could have stayed home. I told him he could stay home. Yeah. Two days after my family. So we had graduation. My family stayed the night after that they went home the next day that next morning I woke up my electricity was off in my apartment mm. that's how high and dry I was left yeah yeah and I'm really sorry that happened because like even again this feeling of wanting like there, there's a feeling of course I want my father I want my father mm -hmm. to care about me I want him to love me and so like there's like this awkward like push and pull that happens where it's mm -hmm. like oh, you're showing me some attention. Maybe you're going to change this time, right? And then it's like, then he goes back into his wall. I haven't heard from him again. And at this point, six months, right? Like, so these, these empty promises, these, even with the wedding, he said, oh, I'll make it up to you. Never, first of all, you can't, but also you never tried after that either. Like, I haven't seen him since we, since like literally physically, um, mm -hmm. it was years until I saw him again because we went to go visit my grandmother in Florida for her birthday. And he just happened to be there. And so- talk. Oh, go, ahead. Yeah. go ahead. No, no. I was going to say like when I was there, I confronted him about it because mm -hmm. I spent all these years like trying to protect his character, trying to protect his feelings, even like I don't want you. I'm afraid to say anything, because if I say something, you're going to go MIA again. You're going to go ghost. What I yes. want you to do. Yes. What I want mm -hmm. you to do is hear me, honor my feelings, honor me, love me and choose me. Mm -hmm. But you never choose me like you always choose everything else. Even when he got married. His new yes. wife had a whole family and he would go to their family mm -hmm. functions, their birthday parties, their birthday dinners. I had to watch on Facebook him raise, like live a whole other life to like fathers to other people while I haven't seen him in years. So like, I want him to be my father. I want him to be loving and supportive of me, but I also had to set boundaries because I can't allow you to keep hurting me and cutting me like this. Let's talk about not needing them. Yeah. But there's still a part of you who wants your father to be there. Absolutely. So time and time again, when there is this small window of opportunity for them to show up, we give it to them every single time. Every time. And every single time we open up the opportunity for them to disappoint us. And we end up being mad and hating ourselves because yep. why do I keep falling for this? Why am I so stupid? Like, But at the same time, what I had to learn is you're not stupid. That is what your parent is supposed to do. That's true. Yeah. You're not stupid. That is what your parent is supposed to do. So you're not wrong yeah. for, you know, when there is a window of opportunity for them to show, trying to offer that up, because yeah. if you don't, then it's your fault. Exactly. Then yeah. you are to blame why there's no relationship because yeah. you didn't give them a chance, even though, hey, we're 30, what, 31, 32. Hello. Yeah. 30, <laughs> 31, 32 years for you yeah. to get that. You didn't. Now my mm -hmm. dad, again, did not show up for me in, in even the bare minimum of circumstances, always show, you know, I can't do this for you because I got to send money to your, I can't do this. I got to send money to your brother. Da, 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 blah, blah. Well, you know, they got the kids and I need to do X, blah, blah, blah. First of all, again, I didn't even know he had that many grandkids at this point. I found out on Facebook the other day that there are seven of them, them, them kids. I don't know them kids. Yeah. Don't know them, whatever. Fine. That's, that's y'all bad. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but to see that my dad flew all the way to California across the country to go see my nephew graduate high school when I can't get you to do the bare minimum, I can't get you to show up in the most bare minimal ways for me. And I'm right here. Yeah. It's a different kind of pain. I'm right here. Yeah. But you will pack your things. You go, he's gone to California. He goes to California at least once a year. He goes to California. Yeah. You got remarried to your wife 
all of a sudden you got a passport, you could travel outside the country. Yeah. Where did that, where did that come from? Yeah. Where did that come from? All of a sudden you own two properties with your wife. We, you have never owned a house for as long as you were my dad. Mm. I've lived in a one bedroom apartment the whole time I was under your care, yeah. but now you marry somebody new, blah, blah. You are, you are gaining access to this new kind of life. All of a sudden you have the ability to do these things. Yep. Where was this at back then? Absolutely. And then even with me, you know, looking for, cause I was coming home or whatever. Why do I need to go rent somewhere when you own two properties? Yeah. Not only that, one of the properties you own is a duplex. So technically mm-hmm. you own three places. You yeah. live in one place. You have two other, two other homes. Yeah. Why am I having to rent somewhere else? Do you want to know why I had to rent somewhere else? He didn't mind me staying at his property and I was going to pay, which. But I needed to talk to his wife first. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> the one that the one that I don't have a relationship with because you never created one, you never created mm-hmm. an environment for one mm-hmm. or whatever. But I'm your child. Yes. Yes. And it's it's like when they get when they get remarried, it's almost like they forget, like, oh, it's not even they forget. They choose, like, oh, well, my duty is to my wife. But when you were married to your wife before, my mom, your duty wasn't to her. So what, what is what is different? What is changing? You had a wife. You had a, you wife. Had a wife. You had a whole you had family. A wife. You had kids. You ha- and now you leave behind a trail of broken homes, broken people, like, and that's not embarrassing to you. Like, I- I'm now just all of a sudden everything is out of. Oh, I mind you, at one point my dad was staying at my grandmother's house because when he met his wife and when he got met, he was living with his mom. Let's be clear, okay? Mm-hmm. She sold her house to move in there. Okay, that's crazy. But go ahead. I came home, I go stay at my grandma's house because there's space for me there or whatever. There's not space in my mom's house. I don't like it. I, it's very triggering for me to return to that small space. It's yeah. triggering as hell for me. Yeah. I ended up leaving out of my grandmother's house because I get a call from my sister asking me what's going on. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, dad said that, you know, he, you know, you had to ask, he wasn't going to have you there making his wife feel uncomfortable. Mind you, I've just been minding my business. That's it. I'm at my grandmother's house. Yeah. Minding my business, watching Hey Arnold on Hulu. My And to hear, like, and he has come into my, and to hear that I'm the one causing tension. I'm making his wife feel uncomfortable, which, this, again, this is my grandmother's house. Yeah. Your wife don't even speak to me. Yeah. Yeah. But she's allowed to be that nasty. Yeah. Because but because I'm life. finding comfort in a place that's home for me, mm-hmm. a place that I was at first, mm-hmm. I'm a problem and I need to go. Yeah. Because her, but his wife I also home. figured out that it is a lot of, it has a lot to do with who he painted me to be to her because you don't want the kid that tells the truth. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To be present. Absolutely not. Absolutely. And not. to be vocal yeah. and to have a relationship with this person. But that was a lot for me. Yeah. That was so much for me. Yeah. I, listen, I get it and I hear you. And when I, when I, when my father chose either himself or his new family or his peace and happiness, every it time. literally every time for every himself. Time. Meanwhile, we're sacrificing everything for him. Like mm-hmm. everything, your, your physical space, your physical health, like your mental health, all that good stuff, your money. Like, cause we can like, skip over how I took care of his mother full time that part so he could live his dream life with his wife yep and and his multiple homes that he owned and it's crazy like how it's crazy how like these men mine went all women in their lives of emotional energy of support because the thing is even with my other two siblings my other two brothers they don't talk to my dad like they they don't talk to Mm -hmm. him like my dad will reach out to them to them every once in a while um but when it comes to me trying to like like improve or heal the relationship all the work is being mm-hmm. done by me like I'm the one reaching out I'm the ones checking up on him like especially when COVID all hit, the responsibility like, is being placed on us as well because absolutely. I feel like the conversation is oh why don't you talk to your dad have you called your dad why doesn't he talk Did to me to your- like why am I pursuing my father and, and and to a point that really impacted and I want to talk about this too how I related to men in general. Mm-hmm. I was I I entertained way too much stayed way too long accepted absolutely. way too little because I was not brought up with men showing me what it means to be treated well by men, but also what it means to actually be loved. And <laughs> like, getting into the habit of chasing. Yes. Because absolutely. it almost it almost is as if the less, 
you know, the less you do mm-hmm. for me that, that you should do at the bare minimum, the more I chase, the harder yes. I feel like I need to work. Cause you want that love. You want that if validation. If I do a little bit more, if I do this, well then, yep. you know, but, and it's never that. It's never it's that. Never that. Never. It's never that. Like even again, during COVID, I'm reaching out to him, checking up on him. Like, and he's older now. He's, he's almost going to be 70 soon. And he's still mm-hmm. doing the same stuff. And for me, my fear is like, my fear is like him passing away and us not healing the relationship. But I have begun to accept that that might have to be a reality because it's like, I can't, I can't keep. And my husband was the person who was like, you're doing too much. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I'm reaching out for and he Cause he would see how broken I was. Like mm-hmm. when the call wouldn't be answered, when the text yeah. wouldn't be returned, when, yeah. when pr- promises weren't fulfilled. And like, my husband would have to sit with me through that. Right. Like he would have mm-hmm. to be like, you know, this is like, this is bullshit. Like this, this is, this yeah. is horrible. And so, yeah. um, and for, and for his, for him, my husband's like that, like he's involved in his life. And so even seeing that is triggering to me, mm-hmm. me going to weddings and seeing women dance I with mean, their fathers is triggering to me. in general, friendships in general, yes. like people whose parents show up for them. Yeah. I'm just, because like they do that, whoa. huh? <laughs> that happens. Because, whoa. <laughs> yes. I am taken aback. Yes. Like, because, and I'm very, I'm very fortunate in the way that my boyfriend now, who this shit hits different. Okay. Yeah. This shit hits different, but it hits different because he, he arrived at a time where I finally started to choose myself when it came to my father and the rest of my family, honestly. I love it. Um, boundaries are important. Mm-hmm. Um, years of therapy will do that for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had taken time to establish these boundaries, uphold these boundaries, um, and enjoy these boundaries, I will say, because it does start to feel good, but there's a grieving process that occurs first. And you have to grieve these relationships first. Yeah. I had to grieve not having my, I had to grieve, you know, seeing my dad show up for my siblings and their kids and X, Y, and Z and not be there for me. I had to grieve not having a relationship with my elderly grandmother because of, you know, what that caused for me mentally, because I love my grandmother's death. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it took everything out of me to take care of her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And my, my dad, my dad kind of let that happen. He left it on me. I mean, my dad would come by the house for five, 10 minutes and then be, you know, I'm going to go home. He lived six minutes away. Mm. Everything fell on me. Yeah. That took a toll on me. And, you know, she's going to be who she is, whatever. But the level of stress that I endured in that time, I've never been more unhealthy in my life. Yeah. Never been more unhealthy in my life. I've always struggled with depression. Never been near ending my life. Yeah. Yeah more than I was being in an environment with all of them having constant access to me Mm -hmm. overextending myself Mm -hmm. or whatever, like so much. And, and speaking of ending my life, like I told my dad in that time that that's what was happening in the moment. Do you think he responded to me? Instead of responding to me, he contacted my mom and told her he needs to call. She needs to call her daughter then a gossiped about me because when I later heard my grandmother talking on the phone with someone else, you know, talking about, you know, uh, da, 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 you know, that's the devil. Da, da, da. I don't know what's gotten into her, blah, blah. You guys literally pushed me to my, she raised that man. So yeah, yeah fair. but you guys literally pushed me to my very edge and then villainized me yeah. for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I had to let it go. If I were, if I was going to live, I had to let it go. Mm-hmm. 